Hey, this is Ben, um, and we're looking at Drambo by Beep Street, uh, which is the modular Groovebox app on iOS, iPad, iPhone, standalone AUV3. This video is just going to be a quick one. Um, wanted to focus ex just on connections between modules um, to show that, yes, they work automatically, but then you can also wire them up um, however you want. And that you know, this really is a, a modular environment, so you don't just have to make a sort of like a standard synthesizer instrument or sampled instrument um, or effects. You can kind of create an experiment um, in here and do things that you can't do um, with other synthesizers or with other um, instruments. So I'm going to go on to an empty track. They're all empty right now. Um, and I'm gonna, first, I'm just going to start throwing stuff together. Um, now I'm going to add a module by clicking on this plus sign, and um, I always like to um, start with a VCA, and then I can add something behind it um, just by like dragging over and letting go. Um, if you do it slowly, you see a little plus sign opens up. You don't need to like wait for that plus sign. It can just be like a quick gesture, and um, you can tap keep adding and then you can just start clicking on stuff. So I'm going to add an oscillator and a different oscillator, um, a super saw, I'll add a noise source, and then um, I'm going to add LFO, a stereo LFO, some envelopes, um, maybe like a random module, pitch module. Um, okay, so now and I'm going to tap and see what... So, um, in Drambo, by default, everything gets wired up automatically. And if I want to see what is sounding in the app or within my chain, um, this is the track output, and then everything's color-coded. Um, I can also tap on a signal input, and it will show me where it's getting um, another module's output from. So I am seeing that the output on the VCA is the, the noise. Um, what I want to do is add a mixer, so I'm going to mix some signals together, and now I'm just going to get it to pull from maybe these two oscillators, these three oscillators, I'll save the noise for later. Okay, so now I have probably more what I want. Now these are my modulators, um, so they send out C CV signal and um, change other parameters. Drambo has um, signal flowing left to right, so I need to move these modulators before the other modules that I want to affect with them uh, for me to do anything. And really, I'm starting here just to show you that, yeah, everything happens kind of automatically by default. All the connections stay, they don't stay in tech necessarily, but they are um, kind of configured automatically as you move things around, um, and Drambo sort of senses what you might want connected. But you do not have to um, stay with that like setup uh, in this app. So, you know, I got rid of the mixer on um, the VCA and that now it's pulling from noise again. So if you want to set your own connections, all you have to do is tap the um, signal button or the input and then select the input that you want. So first, I'm, I just want to see what this sounds like. Um, you know, these are modulators over here, but you can put them into um, an audio signal input and then see what it sounds like. So I'm going to pump up the um, frequency. We can see it is sounding, but you probably can't hear it. It's kind of hard to do uh, with a mouse. So. so I'm playing with the phase. You know, nothing crazy is going on. But you can listen to an LFO. What would a... Um, an envelope sound like. So it's like a, a quick little snappy sound. So um, you know, what I'm going to do first, how about I add a filter, and I'm going to send the envelope through a filter, and then we'll listen to that. Sorry, my mouse is doing crazy things. I'm using a mouse so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so that's what a, an envelope going through a filter sounds like. Now we can modulate the, uh, I'll do it with a, I don't think it's stereo modulatable. We'll do it with a regular LFO. So 
So I have an oscillator. You know, that doesn't not doing anything too interesting. Um, I have an oscillator that's oscillating at audio rate because you know you can hear oscillators well. Um, but maybe I want to um, modulate the cutoff of this little tappy sound with an oscillator. And I'm gonna see what that sounds like. So when you add a modulation source, uh, you're gonna be you know that you can add it because it has this little arrow next to the parameter knob. You tap, and then you select the module's output that you want to use as modulation. And then this little, uh, it's like an amount knob for that modulation source, opens up. Okay. So it's like a little bit more noisy. You can get some bleepy bloops in there. Um, you know, let's try something else. I'm going to get rid of the filter. Um... I'm going to add filter. And so now we have to kind of like reconnect things because we broke some connections. Um, I removed the module that was the VCA's input. Um, I'm going to get rid of these. Um, got a little bit crazy with what I was adding. Um, so we'll say we want to get it from the filter again. Now, um, what do you say we, you know, here's what it sounds like. Just a pulse wave, pulse wave modulation. Um, why don't we see what um, LFO modulation on the frequency sounds like going through with a filtered LFO. Okay, so here's the LFO. So you can see that, that does not sound like a normal LFO. You kind of have to bring it up to like close to audio rate. Whoa! But then you get these kind of crazy sounds. And we could you know, open this filter a little bit more. Um, you can have multiple modulation sources at a destination too. So we could have another LFO. Um, maybe, so this is one thing I like, um, you can have like re-triggering envelopes if you, um, set your gate source or your trigger source for the envelope to, um, something else that sort of like randomly cycles. So we'll revert this back to, um, uh, sort of like no modulation and we'll also modulate with the envelope. So now... So you have re-triggering envelopes, and you could re-trigger with the LFO, you could re-trigger with um, some other sound source. Um, it's really up to you. Anyways, um, so another, um, this is sort of just like a standard trick in modular, I think, um, is to, I'm gonna remove uh, or stop our modulation, um, to like oscillate a filter or modulate a filter with the oscillator that's going in. With the so you get some like new timbres that you weren't necessarily um, getting before. I don't know. It's just, it, there's so many fun things you can do and you just like, you stick some stuff together, you play around with the connections and you see what sounds you get. Um, so a couple other things that could be fun. I'm going to start from scratch, I think. Um, we'll just go to a new track. So um, these are sort of like experiments that I've done that I like. Um, if you put something into a rack, it can be saved more easily and then you can use it later. So if I just set up like a quick um, synthesizer sort of thing, um, We'll maybe do like a filter. So really f long release. Now maybe I have an envelope. I mean, I would like one on the filter, which would sound like this. So it, it just momentarily brings up the, um, the filter cutoff. Now what if I wanted 
I don't want to put a delay on my whole sound. I want to delay the envelope. So another processor that you have is the delay effects. And what we have to, you know, it's not looking for input from an envelope. So we have to make that connection on our, on our own. So tap the input, select envelope, and then maybe we'll do like something like this. And now we have an envelope going through a delay, and that's what we're going to use as our modulation source. So it's not that the the VCA isn't being delayed. There's no delay on the end of the track. It's not like a an audio effect. It's actually an effect on the CV coming. So another thing that you can do if you're like interested on what is that signal actually doing, the oscilloscope, which is under uh, miscellaneous, um, you can attach that to look at any specific modulation source. And you can play around with the settings here. So this is the envelope. And you have a, a short attack and then a decay. But we can look at that delayed envelope. And then you can see it rising and falling. Um, so this is just one example of something that you can do in Drambo that would be hard. I mean, you couldn't do um, in another standard synthesizer, like closed, um, non-modular environment. Um, and it's really easy to do in Drambo. So you do not have to stick with the connections that are made automatically. Um, you can mix and match things however you want and just you know, see what cool noises and um, tones, timbres come out of it. So another really cool um, thing that you have going on here. Um, your, I'm just going to set up again. Starting from scratch, I usually start with the VCA. It just makes sense to me. So start with a very simple waveform, a sine wave. You know, not, not interesting. Or it, it can be useful, but um, there. In addition to just like using a mixer and combining the two signals together, um, you have all these different ways under math to combine signal but you're doing like crazy um, calculations on them. So one of them that I really like is the maximum and the minimum modules. So this basically um, just gives you the greater signal. And it sounds a little bit different when they're like in sync, but if I mess with the tuning, you're gonna get this like weird phasing um, going on and it might be helpful to look at our oscilloscope. Reset. It's kind of like set in like whatever sync it's in, so we can change that now. So these are perfectly in sync because I hooked up the sync module um, to the gate. So every time I trigger, they're both going to be in sync. I can leave one out. So now it's sometimes in sync, but not always. Um, now we can make this sound really wild. Um, if we keep messing with the tuning, it's going to get weird. And if you have like a, a detuned to a musical interval, it will sound really good. Really beefy. Um, if you change the octave. Um, but what I'd like to see happen, play with keys. So there's, if we want the sound to glide, we have to, there's no like track setting for glide or portamento. It's gonna be under um, CV glide. And I'm gonna add two of them. And then you can have kind of independent glides on different oscillators. So oscillator two is labeled two. It's gonna get its CV glide, which is pitch input from just one of these. And it's not gliding right now. Um, I think I have to disconnect the gate. That is my understanding of how it works. So. You have two different glides and the oscillators are going to be like, they're not going to be in tune with each other when they're gliding. And then they will come into tune with each other. So you get this like really cool beating 
from two oscillators, and if you started throwing in some other sounds in there or like you know filtering that, uh, it could get kind of wild. Um, another cool thing that you can do. Uh, there's a pitch modulator. So that's ramp. That's not pitch. Here, pitch. Um, very quickly, I'm going to set something up. So I'm going to take an LFO. Um, and then I want this to be, you know, we can see what that sounds like. So you set a source for the pitch modulator, Let's say the LFO, and it's going to go through the CV glide, and then it's going to go into the um, oscillator three. So as we raise this up, you know, it's not going to be in tune. So that, you know, that might not work for us. Um, I do want that source. So you can quantize your pitch signal to specific notes. So I'm going to have this, we'll just do, I know this will be in key and I'm going to play in key. So it'll be um, in key with us. So now it's going to slowly cycle through. We'll do a different waveform. And it's going to go through those different, they're not, I don't know if they're interval, intervals or what, but this, these different amounts of beating and weird um, tones that you get out of the maximum. And we could make this poly, of course. So just another like quick little experiment. We'd have to tweak around until we got like a really usable sound. Um, but there's all this stuff in the, the math section that you can use to create like complex waveforms and um, also change other signal um, in useful ways and then also just in like fun, uh, crazy ways. Um, one other quick thing. and like. I'm not trying to be comprehensive here at all. This is just showing some examples of like processing modulation sources and um, some of the fun like pitch stuff you can do combining waveforms. Um, just one other thing, and I'll do a whole video on the samplers, but um, let's see what I want to do here. So this is the it's the super saw. That sound really thick. Oh, the stereo on it, and then it's the filter hooked up. So I'm pulling the sampler in here. I'll see in a second. Um, there's a couple under miscellaneous utility under UI um, at the very bottom. There's a knob. And there's a trigger button, and there's a like an XY pad that you can use. And these basically either trigger sends a gate or a trig signal. Um, I guess it sends a trig because you don't hold it down. Um, and then knob is just it's almost like a macro that you can set up. Um, you can control multiple um, values at once if you wanted to. XY has two. Um, I'm just going to use the knob for now. So let's say like I was. You know, why would I want to do this? Control filter um, with knob. Well, maybe I have like another um, another value that I want to modulate, like maybe mix, for example. I should technically have this after the VCA. Okay, so I have two um, destinations for knob, and now it's acting as sort of like a macro. I just turn one knob and multiple parameters change. Um, but what if I wanted to like almost record modulation? So I'll put in like a quick sequence. It's not gonna be an interesting sequence. Really not interesting. Um, but if I wanted to like, 
have sort of like a recorded and triggerable, I would say, because you can record automation. So now you're getting that recording, I'll clear that real quick. But you can record the modulation from knob into a sampler. Okay, so now this is signal that we can use to send out. And we can hear what that sounds like. And it won't be like locked into any specific pattern. So now we can disconnect knob. And we can modulate with the output of the sampler. And what I'm going to do is just set this to a trigger button. And I'll mess with the offset. Like this looks like an interesting point in the modulation. Crank up that. Okay, so we lost temporarily lost our gate signal um, because we it sort of like rearranged things, um, and I didn't notice that initially. So I have to reset my um, VCA to just get track gate. That's all I have to do. That's what was wrong. Um, so now I should just be able to hold down. I'll make this a poly. And then when I hit trig, it's going to start playing through that. So it's like kind of like a performance thing. I don't know. I think that's really fun. We could set it. And then this can now be like P locked if I want. So I could say like, well, here, trig. And then set the offset there. And then on this one, uh, bring it over here for that like drop. Also put a trig. And then on this part, trig. So now, you know, I have my notes that are in the sequencer and then I'm kind of sequencing this automation um, at that point. So this is just a quick kind of a haphazard video on some of the cool, um, just give you ideas of things to try. Um, and then everyone who gets this app, I know, is just going to have... Um, a load of fun if you're if you're into making your own patches and just sort of experimenting uh, you have plenty of room to do that just looking through some of the modules i mean there's there's like a regular pitch module but there's also an overtone or like a partials module um you can do like smoothing with a slew limiter um there's a couple different sequencers that you can play with there's all these cool um time modules that you can mess with like how clock signal um, is working. Um, and then, you know, all the math modules give you like different ways to combine signal or um, change signal in interesting ways, plenty of different modulation sources. Um, and then, of course, all of just the cool, like fun audio effects that, you know, can also um, affect modulation signal, and then plenty of sound sources. So this is really, it's a modular environment. Um, it's up to you what you want to create with it. Um, so don't just get locked into um, using the automatic connections. You can rearrange things and um, sort of manually make those connections to get the results that you want out of this app.